I'm going to try to make a swarf toolpath around this highlighted surface around the outside of the part. Now, if we take a look at creating the toolpath using default values, we'll see that the tool axis is really quite unstable. The reason for this is that this surface is really not a true swarfable surface. So the toolpath has been created. I'm just going to animate that and you can see that the motion is really quite jerky. Unfortunately this is likely to lead to a number of marks on the part. Quite often a solution to this is to switch on the follow surface laterals tab. Under advanced we have this option here follow surface laterals. I'm going to switch that on in this instance select the surface and reapply. A very similar looking toolpath has been created. If we animate, you will see that the motion is much smoother. Let's take a look at that on the machine tool. First, I will demonstrate the first toolpath to show the difference. So, look at the C axis. Lots of reversals and stuttering. Now let's look at the second toolpath. And before we do that, what I will do is just switch on undercut shading. Because you can see over here the part goes from positive draft to negative draft. So in this particular area, and the same on the other side, we do expect quite a dramatic swing on the C-axis. And we need to do that in order to follow the surface accurately. But the remainder of the surface, you will see, is very smooth on the C-axis. This second example of swarfing is also surprisingly difficult due to the nature of the shape. Again, we have what is in reality a non-swarfable set of surfaces. I want to swarf around this major surface, these fillets, this back surface, and the fillet on the back. Now this surface is a true cone, so as you could imagine, if I just switch on the conical laterals, the tool should always be aligned in the direction of the laterals on a cone. However, when we reach this area of fillet, the tool axis must change very, very quickly to the lateral direction on the cone to the side of the fillet. In order to get this example on the screen, what you need to do is to switch off all levels except example 2 underscore main model. So this is the level which should be switched on. Also, later we will start to simulate this on the machine tool. So on the machine tool toolbar, ensure that you have machine underscore origin underscore example 2 work plane as the machine tool's origin. Okay, under the folder example 2, Let's take a look at the first toolpath. I'm going to simulate that from the start. Now the toolpath looks reasonably good when simulated without a machine tool. Moves around the cone very, very nicely. Then we have some quite severe tool axis motion in the corner. Let's take a look at that on the machine tool. simulate that again. So we get lots of C-axis reversals where the C-axis goes from positive to negative. This again is likely to leave 
some quite severe marks on the part. And the reason that Pamela is doing this is because it is really not possible to swarf around this corner accurately. Okay, let's switch off the machine tool for a moment. What I'm going to do is take away the backside and simply machine this surface on its own. This is a conical surface, so we shouldn't have any major problem getting a good tool axis from this particular surface. Take a look at the settings. Recalculate it if we want to. So we select only the conical surface and apply. Now take note, the important parameter here is the base position. We are using base position bottom, which essentially means that the bottom of the tool will always touch the bottom of the surface. Okay. The toolpath looks reasonably good, but you can see that you have these what look quite strange moves at the ends. What is the reason for that? Well, let's take another look at the lateral curves on the surface. Imagine the bottom of each lateral curve will be the base position of the tool. So here we can see on the trimmed edge, I've added more laterals here that you, so that you can see it more clearly. The bottom of each lateral, this lateral finishes here. The lateral here finishes here. So this is why the tool is riding up the side of the surface. It's always touching the bottom of the surface, which is really not ideal. I don't want it to do that. So how do we avoid that problem? There are a number of ways to avoid it. One of the methods is to apply some extension surfaces and to include those in the calculation. If I just switch off the wireframe, so I have this extension surface and this surface to create the toolpath. That surface you can create in PowerShape or PS Modeler. It's simply an extension of the major cone. And now you can see that the toolpath behaves very well at the ends. Another option is to create, instead of extensions, you can create a base surface. Here I've created a surface for the tool to drop onto. Now if this is the method that you prefer to choose, let's go to settings, what you must do is change the base position from bottom to automatic. If the base position is automatic, then Power Mill will always look for the lowest position of the tool until it falls onto a surface which stops it. So again, we have an excellent result, and this time we didn't need to create the extension. The third and final option is to use base position work plane. Here you don't need to model any surfaces. Let me just switch off that one here. But what you do need to do is to create a work plane for the part to drop onto. Here I've got a work plane. If I just view from the side. I will put the crosshairs on my cursor, you can see that this work plane will act as the base plane for the toolpath. So if you look at the horizontal line of my cursor, that is the lowest point of the tool contact position. Now to use this, let's take a look at the toolpath, settings, we have base position work plane and we must tell it which work plane to use. I am using this work plane. Select the surface and apply. Now before applying this surface, 
Ensure that you are ignoring the extensions and the base surfaces. So what I'm going to do is to come into here, select the extension surfaces, press this level to ignore. Also the base surfaces, ignore and apply and accept. Now we can switch off the extension and base surfaces. Just to ensure that the main conical surface is selected and apply. So, as I said, we get a very nice surface. Let me just simulate from here. Sweeps around there very nicely, very smooth. The only negative side to this approach is that the tool needs to be longer. Because we're going down to a work plane base, it needs to be longer than is absolutely necessary, which may or may not cause you a problem on your particular parts. So, there's three methods for machining the conical side. The remainder of the part is quite simple. We simply select the three surfaces and create a swarf toolpath standard because these three surfaces together are swarfable. So, if you receive a part like this with difficult corners, I suggest you split the swarf toolpaths into two toolpaths.